Safety continues with John Stossel. We're down to our last two food myths. Number two is expensive coffee tastes better. How could that be a myth given the fuss people make about getting the right cup of coffee? You are watching a coffee taste test recorded about 20 years ago starring John Stossel. He'd dig in and he'd get the facts below the gossip. Some people pay five times as much, maybe for something that they don't like as much. Some people pay a lot of money, they think they're getting something special. That's called being ripped off. I'm David Hoffman, documentary filmmaker, coffee drinker, and this is about coffee. So before I show you John's amazing taste test, I want to talk about coffee. Well, here's my coffee. David Hoffman, filmmaker, in case I forget. What is it about coffee that is so important to me in the morning, as it is. I come from New York, and in New York, we drank coffee. You go into any place, you get a cup of coffee, hot, and you put some milk in it. That was coffee. Maybe 7-Eleven, I think, had started, and they had pretty good coffee. Some mornings, there's a little monster in all of us. Morning, Fred. <laughs> and until that first cup of coffee, we can all be pretty beastly. Good morning, Fred. <laughs> That's when your 7-Eleven store can be a lifesaver. Good morning, Fred. With a good cup of fresh fruit hot coffee to perk up your morning. 7-Eleven coffee brings out the best, not the beast in you. Hey, Ralph! I got sent to California to launch startups in the early 1990s. Northern California, San Francisco area where coffee wasn't coffee, as you know. Coffee was taste, specialty, Starbucks. They had these Italian names for their coffees. Italian names are perfect, because they sound like coffee, what coffee ought to sound like. So I started drinking Starbucks, but then people in the know said, there's Pete's, all kinds of specialty coffees, the right roasting. And then I got on the train. There was espresso how to pronounce this strong and dense and tight coffee preparation. Espresso. Espresso. So when you pronounce espresso, there is no X in the word. So you don't say espresso, just espresso. It means pressed out, not drip, not drip coffee, which was already fancy. This was pressed out coffee. Espresso. Then there was a latte. 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 I think the word means something like drink to sip. Perfect, the latte. Then there was the cappuccino. Cappuccino, cappuccino. The cap, we called it. I want a double cap with foam. I want a double cap with a little chocolate sprinkled on it. I mean, now we're getting there. This is coffee. I'm getting more and more, let me just say, to be honest with my subscribers, snooty. I'm so snooty that when I go back to New York, and I ask for a simple, like a latte with a little vanilla on it. It's like, what are you doing, David? Drink the coffee, it's coffee. It hadn't really reached yet this national, international feeling where you pay five bucks and more for what you used to pay 25 cents for. And now it should be like a nickel because it's like some black color with water to me. I'm a snoot. Then I get this gig from Marquez de Paiva. in Sao Paulo, Brazil. A million acres this family has. Four generations they've been farming coffee, beans, and roasting, and they're going into America. And they hire me to help them tell the story of their four generations and of the quality of the coffee, which was called in Brazil, Bom Dia. So I get hired to do not only the story, but also design the bag and the story that's on the bag. Why? Because they want to get into Walmart specifically Sam's Club. So I go to Walmart and Walmart says, if you want to get in here, you have to prove that your company is fair trade and good. That means you got to fly us to Brazil. Two, you got to come up with a story so good that when the bag is on the shelf in Sam's Club, within three months, 80% of the bags are gone. If they're not, you don't have a business. So Sidney Marquez de Paiva, he's the head of the company right now, flies me to Sao Paulo, go to the farm. A million acres, a million acres of coffee, incredible. E que está em conformidade com as exigências do comércio mundial. 
respeitando as boas práticas agrícolas em todas as fases da produção. Que ele foi monitorado e avaliado, que segue rigorosas regras de sustentabilidade e que... Se você viu um teste de teste, você vai ver um em John Stossel por ordinários. Mas um teste de teste... Olha a sua mão como like wine. Fruity. It's a little bit sour. Has a little bit of edge. It's warm. It's cold. I mean, you cannot believe what these taste testers are like. I was fascinated. So just before I end, let me just tell you one more thing that really sets the stage for John Stossel's taste test with ordinary people. Are the expensive coffees better? Is the question he's asking. Sydney Marquez de Paiva takes me to a five plus 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 star restaurant in Miami to discuss what we're going to do. And we sit down and we have this incredible meal through the dessert, and then comes the coffee. And Sidney says to me, watch. Puts the coffee down. He says to the waiter, who's a five-star waiter, knows everything. Uh, what is this coffee? Where is it roasted? What brand? Uh, I don't know, the guy says. Runs in the back. The chef comes out. Uh, well, we're looking up. It's a big bag. It doesn't have anything in it. This is a five-star. In a five-star restaurant, you folks know, Everything is five star plus, but the coffee, it's just coffee. Maybe they have a latte or a cappuccino, but you never know the brand, the roasting, what's in it, the taste. I want a fruity coffee. I want a sour coffee. I want a very strong taste for the evening, etc., etc. So there's this unbelievable gap in the industry between the snoots like me and the restaurants and how coffee is served. So back to John Stossel. The time when he's doing this, he's a troublemaker. And he's asking the question, and he's going to answer the question, are expensive coffees worth more? My personal opinion, yeah, they are better. But let's see what he found. We're down to our last two food myths. Number two is expensive coffee tastes better. How could that be a myth, given the fuss people make about getting the right cup of coffee? Discover Folgers Dark Roast Coffees, deliciously ground. Coffee companies say they take great pains to make sure their coffee beans are better. Samples from each batch of specialty beans are roasted and ground for this important test, the cupping. Here, experts sip small portions of the brewed coffee and judge its taste, body, and aroma. What they approve is later sold by companies like Dean and DeLuca, Starbucks, and Oren's Daily Roast, which cost a lot. Compare their prices, $12 and $10 a pound, to the $5 a pound for Folgers, America's best seller, or $4 for Marquez de Paiva, sold by Sam's Club at Walmart, and even less for instant coffees like Nescafe. Now, people say cheap isn't as good. For some reason, you get cheap coffee and it tastes cheap. You pay two bucks a cup of coffee and it tastes good. I don't know why. Maybe he's tasting the price. Thank you. We ran a test. Yeah, three is average. I didn't taste I didn't like it. Oh, no. three I had is average. We invited people to try samples of those six coffees I mentioned before. Oh, Kevin so Sennett, who writes books on coffee, supervised the brewing, making sure it was done within industry standards. I just love that look. We then served the coffee fresh to coffee lovers we recruited. Average. Two is bad. Four, four, four is average. No one knew which brand she was drinking. We asked them to grade each coffee, bad, average, or great. It's getting better as the numbers are going up. Then I sat down with some of the tasters, most of whom had clear preferences. There are some brands better than others? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Coffee is the most passionate and romantic beverage. And you can really tell the difference. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's like fine wine. And some, like him, could identify their favorite. His was Starbucks, which did well in our test. I like five. Starbucks was the best. I had a feeling it was Starbucks. Others, like this woman, were totally fooled. On the blind test, you liked Starbucks. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I knew it. I knew she had it. told us she hated Starbucks. I don't know. You Maybe do. I'm picking the wrong coffee. A few, like this woman, were surprised to find they preferred instant coffee. That's interesting because like, I feel like instant coffee is kind of sacrilegious. We invited all six coffee companies to send representatives to watch our test. Only Folgers and Oren said yes. and. Only the Orange rep, this woman, agreed to take the test. On a blind test, would she prefer her brand? You only picked one as the best. You think it was yours? Well, the one you liked best was Orange. <laughs> she says better costs more. The best coffee will not certainly not be the cheapest. Why does it cost so much? 
We don't look at the price. If you want the first grade, you have to pay the price for it. Okay, except for the fact that overall, unscientific as our test was, her coffee didn't do so well. Half the testers listed it as bad. And it's one of the most expensive coffees. None of these coffees were brewed the way we do, so the result is not going to be uh, as good as it could be. Okay, the Folgers rep wouldn't even take the test. You didn't want to take the test? No, uh, unfortunately. He said he couldn't because other testers smelled of perfume. So I didn't feel like I could take the test. It wasn't that you thought you might, like, score your coffee <laughs> badly. Uh, <no. laughs> but plenty of people did say it was bad. Oh, the two is the worst. Oh, two is the worst in my opinion. On our test of what people thought was great coffee, Starbucks came in first. A close second went to Surprise, the cheap Sam's Club, Marquez de Paiva brand. Orange came in a distant third, followed closely by Nescafe, the instant coffee. The most expensive brand, the $12 a pound Dean and DeLuca's, ranked second to last, and dead last, the best seller. Folgers came in last. Well, Every morning, millions of Americans enjoy waking up with Folgers for the great taste and value. The instant coffee did better than Folgers. Well, again, all I can say is that uh, uh, Folgers is America's number one coffee. Well, I mean, he's a company man. What do you expect him to say? <laughs> Our test confirmed what coffee specialists told us. Coffee's a matter of individual taste. And we found some cheap coffees beat some of the expensive ones. Expensive doesn't necessarily mean better. Some people pay a lot of money, they think they're getting something special. That's called being ripped off. <laughs>